Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, what a beautiful song. God creates in the bosom of Yisrael the soundness of Torah that establishes us in the way of his ordinance. And we as a nation of people, he must establish us, Yisraya. And if we are not established by him, then woe unto us. Greetings to all of you that have joined us on the live broadcast on this Katve Imat. Simply the truth of Torah taught here in the midweek service. This is vital unto Yisraya to understand the dynamics of the Torah of Yah. And to understand the dynamics of the Torah, you must understand each and every ingredient. It is vital that when one has passed down a recipe down through the generations, that each generation fail not, they will not try to add, they will not try to alter that recipe, but it is persistent from one generation down to the other. So is the way of Torah living. It is a mind that is governed by the very order, the mind of Yah. And there are those that will speak against Torah. The Torah is simply the substance of his power that he instills or imparts within Yisrael when the, when the revelation of Yahshua is revealed unto them. You cannot understand the power of Yah's truth unless Yahshua is real. And if he is not real, then you will begin to search and to create all kinds of doctrines. Do not add up to a hill of beans, as the old ones would say. It has no value. It has no substance. It is created in a mind that is convoluted. That's what you will find with men. They are creating doctrines or teachings uh, out of the element of falsism, uh, ignorance, uh, and blatant stupidity. Because if it does not mesh, if the witness of the Torah is not there, then it has no value at all. None whatsoever has no essence. I don't care what the renewed covenant or the Brits Mela, the Brits Hadassah teach, the New Testament, as many would call it. But if it does not mesh with Torah, then the statement is wrong and it is false. Hallelujah. I want to begin a teaching on this Katve Imat on this Wednesday. It's going to take me probably several Wednesdays as I teach. Those that have something to teach Yisraya. And so when my time comes again, I will continue in this process. All right, Because it's vital to us as a nation of people that we began to, we began to uh, make sure that we as a nation is equipped. We must have the khali, the weapons of Yah, the destroying weapons of Almighty Yah. Yoshua spoke a profound parable, and I know how this wicked nation and those uh, that are deluded, they don't understand the Torah of Yah, so they take something out of the Brit Hadassah on the face value of what it says, and they interpret that within the construct of a corrupt, wicked, devious, devilish mind. So everything that Yahshua spoke, you're not going to find the agreement in the renewed covenant. We must go back to the Bereshit, the beginning, and see if we can search out the Torah of Yah and see if that is of an element of truth or is some falseism that has been implanted within the text of the speech and the writings of Yah and that it will bring about delusions in the minds of the people. I want to begin here, Yisraya, in the book of Lucas. Luke, hallelujah. hallelujah. Right here, the book of Luke, chapter 22, Yahshua speaks, and he commands those that are the Yisraelites that in the process of the great czar or tribulations and agony of mind by the oppressor, that we that the elect of Yah, if we endure this process uh, and we will overcome uh, and in the process of that, uh, we will establish the very testimony of the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. And that is what the trials, the sufferings are for. They are to give us their strength, the test of assurance, whether this testimony is real uh, or whether it is false Yisra'iyah. And we cannot pursue those that are teaching doctrines that are false, 
We must understand the very content of a just man. And I'll teach on that on Wednesday, on, on Shabbat evening. Uh, the very content of a just man or a righteous man. There are those that say there are no righteous men, but the Torah shows us the content, element, ingredient by any ingredient, what a just man is. It's in the book. We just don't search it out, Israel. And we base things on our perception, what we perceive as a just man, what our interpretation of a just man is, but that's not what the Torah teaches. It shows us, and I will show us that on I would have began here in Lucas chapter 22. We must be gotten to by the weapons. And you need your weapons, Yisra'ya. You need your high-powered rifles. You need your shotguns. You need your armor tanks. You need your armor-piercing armor. You need that. But I will show you the true, true armor-piercing armor. I will show you what the Torah says. These retards that are talking about buying 38s and AK-47s. This is ignorant. It is not of Yah. I will show you in the teaching, and we must understand the elements where Yoshua spoke when he spoke this parable. He says in the book of Lucas chapter 22 and verse 29, <clears throat> he says unto the Yisraelites, he said, and I appoint to you a kingdom, a melchut, a place whereby the comfort of Yah, whereby the serenity of Yah, the strength of Yah abide in that kingdom. And so if one appoints, then one has the power to grant that unto us. Only Yahshua can grant us the entrance into the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. It cannot come other, any other way, Yisra'ya. It cannot come through prayer. It comes by the appointment uh, which Yah has placed in Yeshua HaMashiach, that he, by our names written in his bosom, uh, that he has appointed unto us the kingdom, uh, the Melkut of Almighty Yah. He says, as my Abba has appointed me. It is the Abba that has given Yeshua the jurisdiction, uh, and everything that he speaks, uh, it is of the conscience and the mind of the Most High. So because he was in a natural physical body, it doesn't mean or implies that what he spoke was not of the mind of Almighty Yah. That's why Shaul commands us to allow, to permit, to let, to nothan, to allow that mind to be bestowed upon us. Let the same mind, the identical mind, not an altar mind, the same mind that was in Yoshua HaMashiach, let that mind be in Yisra'ya. Let that be the mind of Yisra'ya. Let that be the governing source of his people. For that is the mind of the creator to govern his people. And we must understand that this kingdom, Yisra'ya, is not a kingdom. It's not a kingdom that is in meat and drink. We must understand that, Yisra'ya. But it is a kingdom of Sadiq and one that is of Shalom, that's what the kingdom of Yah is. And it produces the shimsha of the joy, the excellence of his joy by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. So he has appointed a kingdom unto us whereby we can enjoy the splendor of Yah's joy even in the midst of a nation of oppression, in the midst of every kind of depravity because we have come out of the kingdom mentality of this world. And we walk in the kingdom of Yah because we're governed by the laws and by the stipulations that he commands us to walk in. And when we walk in that law and those rights that he commands us, then we began to procure, we receive from him the greatest of his riches and blessings that we walk in, Yisra'ah. Not these little things that, that are flashy and shiny, but they're things that are greater than that, Yisra'ah. We know that it's not the shalom of man because there are those that have billions and they're not contented. They're not happy. So we know that that is not the strength of Yah's kingdom, Yisra'ah. We have food, we have raiment, and we are contented with what Yah is doing for his nation and for his people. He goes on to say in verse 30, he said that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom of the Melchut. He said, and you, my disciplined ones, and you shall sit on thrones, 
And you shall judge the 12 tribes of Yisra'ya. You're going to judge the nation. You're going to judge the people of Yah. You will be the ones that will judge. I'm imparting into you. I'm appointing unto you. Are we not going to judge the world, Yisra'ya? Are we not going to judge the Melechim? We're going to judge the nations of the earth. We're going to judge. He has given that into the power that has been appointed unto the elect of Almighty Yah. Yoshua said, and then he speaks specifically unto Shimeon. And he says unto him in verse 31, listen to this. He says unto Hepha, Shimeon, Shimeon, he said, I want you to understand, behold, to see that your eye in, your spiritual ears, your, your natural ability to look, to foresee, uh, and to perceive the matter and the workings uh, of darkness. He said, there is one by the name of Hoshotan, and he desire to have you. He desires to have Yisrael. His passion, his desire is to overcome you. And that is the purpose of Hoshotan. Did he not try that with Yoshua HaMashiach? Did he not try to overcome him? So he said unto Shimeon, and we're just like him, are we not? We will say we will not deny your sure we will stand. Uh, wherever you command me to go, yeah, I will go. That's the attitude of Yah's people. Uh, we are very brass when it comes to that because uh, we think that it elevates us over everyone uh, and it gives us a high pinnacle uh, of a place to be recognized uh, above all by him uh, and among our peers. But it's not so, Yisraya. He has appointed us for the kingdom. Uh, and every vessel in the kingdom uh, is a beautiful uh, vessel. Do you understand that? It is an appointment. It is already set. The date is settled. It is already made. It has been solidified by the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach. And it's one thing about Yah's appointment. You never miss them. It is appointed unto man first to die. And then the judgment. So you never miss Yah's appointment. Yahshua is letting us know that this is an appointment given, granted unto me by Yah, that I've appointed you as Yisra'ya place in Yah's kingdom. We're going to sit, we're going to eat, we're going to drink. And the enemy sees that he knows when we're eating the lechem of Yah. And we are truly drinking the dam that will refresh to understand the power of such severity of death that he endured and suffered. And our sins as we falter and, uh, and, and, and go this misguided way that we can appreciate the dumb of your sure that is even more precious, that it is the cleansing power to draw us, to keep us in the way of Yah, and cause our love for him to grow exceedingly, exceptionally loyal to Almighty Yah for the very precious price that was paid for our sins. You understand? So he warns Kepha that Hashatan desires to have him. And he says he wants to nuf. He he wants to sift. He wants to move you back and forth. He wants to shake you. Uh, he wants to cause uh, this topsy turvy type of mindset uh, uh, and thought process to overtake you. We're tossed to and fro, are we not? Uh, our minds are tossed. It is enough. Uh, toss to and fro, up and down, sideways down. Uh, and that is what the enemy desires to do. And we understand that any time that that is the case of Yisra'ya, it is the hand of Yah. He is allowing that. He is allowing that process, Yisra'ya. He has warned us and told us we are not going to rid ourselves uh, of this warfare by some kind of element of a natural way. It's not going to be done by some kind of psychiatrist, some kind of psychotic drugs, uh, or these things. It's not, you're not going to remediate that way. There's a way that we remediate it. We must have our weapons. We must have something that is greater than the nuclear ar ar arsenal. We need something that is more powerful than an AK-47. We need something that is much more powerful than a 45. That doesn't stand the test in the realm that our battle is in. For us to die, that is not even a measure of a thought for us. 
Because we know that there's a great gain and a great, uh, a great prospering in that. Uh, for us to live is under the power and the reign of Yahshua HaMashiach. For us to die, then we have gained all things, Yisrael. So we're not going to remedy it. We're not going to resolve anything. We're not going to take by anything, uh, by any kind of uh, natural, a carnal weapon. It's not going to come that way, Yisrael. But there's some weaponry uh, that is on our side, Yisrael. There's nothing any better than this. In my days, they would say it's bad to the bone, and this is some bad military weaponry that we'll get to, all right? So he said that Hanshotan desired to, to, to enough you as sweet, to sift you as sweet. And Yonshua speaks in verse 32, he said, but I have made prayer for you. I have made the feel, I've interceded, I've cried to the Abba for you, my friend Shimeon. And for one thing that your immuna, your faith, your confidence in Yah fail you not. We have been tried, our immuna is being tested. There are so many doubts and uncertainty. But that is the prayer of Yahshua. We all find ourselves in Kepha that our immuna, our faith, our confidence, our assurance in Yah, it fails us not. Through the midst of agony and trial, that's why Yoshua was speaking on and commending uh, those of the elect of Yah's appointed. Uh, and those twelve was, were the elect uh, of Yah's appointed, just like we are, Yisraya, that we do not lose sight on Yah. And once Kepha, we know the story, once he lost sight of Yahshua HaMashiach, then we saw what was produced out of him. Then we will resort back to our natural proclivity, our flesh, and we will begin to do things that are unseemly and out of the order of the Torah of Yah. So I pray that our Imuna fell us not. That our confidence in Yah, that our all mind, that our certainty and assurance in Yah, that that fail us not, Yisra'ya. Our health may fail us, but let not our immuna fail us. We may fall into the muth or death, but don't allow our immuna to fail us. He said, I pray that your immuna fail not or fails not. He said, and I want to tell you when there is when you are converted, when your heart has the excellence of the power of this truth that you have heard, when the power of the Ruach renews uh, that living substance of power, that word in you, and draws from what Yah has put in you, when you are converted, he said, I want you to strengthen your Yisraelite. Ach, strengthen your brother. When you are converted, when there's a true conversion among Israel, yeah, we have the power to strengthen one another. And if we are not converted, we have no strength to strengthen one another. That's why there is very little strengthening one another among Israel. Yeah. Because we process things in the same kind of a mind and not the mind of Yahshua. We need the mind of Yahshua. And when we are truly converted, we can strengthen Yisra'ya. We can be a great strength unto Yisra'ya. When you are converted, uh, he said, I want you to strengthen your Yisra'yalite brothers. And Simeon said to him, you're sure I am ready to go with you. We are all ready to go, are we not? We're ready to die for him. We're ready to live for him. And yet we're not living lives that are substance for him. He said, I'm ready to go with you both into prison and even, it was not just the death of Muth, which one dies or the process of life ends, but it was the Mahvit. It was a violent death that he suffered. He said, even into the Mahvit, even into the violence of death, by the command of Almighty Yah, death cannot even encroach upon us unless it's by the command of Yah, Yisra'ya. It has no power over Yisra'ya. 
It has no strength at all. Death has no, no authority if we are not walking uh, in blatant defiance of the Torah of Yah. Oh, death, where is your sting? For the sting of death uh, is sin. What is sin? When one transgress the Torah, one has sinned. That's why the enemy has raised up this delusional prostitute uh, that produced harlots uh, to tell the people, you don't have to do that. And it's difficult to get that out of the minds of the people today. They will see things in the Brit Hadassah, but you must bear the witness in the Torah of Yah for it to have any validity. And I can preach anything out of the Brit Hadassah and show you the validity of that statement and the process of the actions in the Torah. I will, even this I will show you. Just bear with me, all right? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, uh, I will go with you to prison even to death. And Yoshua said, he said, I tell you, Chafa, he said, the cock shall not crow this day. Before you shall three times deny that you yada me. The cock shall not even crow. Even three times you shall deny that you even Yada, that you have had an experience with me, that you understand the power of Yah, that you will not deny me. And of course, the cock, does, cock doesn't even crow for us to know that we have denied him in our ways, our actions, our deeds, and we deny him constantly, and we cannot progress in that fashion. But we're just like Peter, we speak like him. <clears throat> and Yahshua said to them, when I sit you without purse and strip and shoes. And he says, uh, I sent you uh, luck. And you lacked anything. And they said nothing. He said, when I sent you forth, uh, you did not have purse. You did not have uh, strip. You had nothing. Uh, but were, was there anything that was liking? And they concurred that there was nothing liking. Now he has sent us forth, Yisra'ya, as sheep into the midst of wolves, but he has not uh, sent us forth with anything lacking. And this generation is teaching us to rely upon the strength of our own flesh. Believe me, uh, you're not going to proceed uh, in the ways of Yah. You're not going to make uh, the progressive innovation, interventions uh, that you think you're going to make uh, by trusting in your flesh. We are a nation of people that we trust in our flesh. Uh, and so we have these same ones that are liars uh, telling you to go buy guns and stock your weapons uh, and all of these damnable twisted lies. Uh, and the reason why they're telling you that because they have uh, no evil. They have no faith. I'm going to show you what to buy in the process of this teaching. I'm going to show you where you lay your money and you buy it. I will show you. I will show you some weapons that are powerful. That man cannot invent these weapons. It's in the book. He said you like nothing. We don't like anything. We may have lust and greed. But we don't lack anything at all. Yeah. Having food and raiment, uh, there would your commands us uh, to be contented, to be satisfied, uh, to be overjoyed, uh, to have that. Yeah. Then said Yahshua to them, uh, this is what he said, but now he that has a purse, you have gone and gained. An experience that you think is very valuable. That's what the purse represents. <clears throat> he said, and you that have strip, you have, uh, you have your cloak and you have uh, all uh, of your chali, your, your garments. He said, you have shoes. He says, lack you anything? And they said nothing. Then he said to them, but now in verse 36, he that has a purse, let him take it. And likewise is strip. And he that has no kharab, no sword, uh, let him sell his garment. We must understand what garment we must sell. We must understand the garment. You're not going to find 
that out in the Brit Hadassah. You must go to the, to the covenant of Yisra'iyah. He commands now. And what Yoshua commands, we must do. We must obey what he commands us here. We must. He said, now go sell your garment. He says, and I want you to buy a harap. I want you to buy a sword. Go sell your garment and buy a sword. And the only way that we're going to do this, we must have a total confidence in what he commands us, Yisrael. He says, sell it and buy a sword. Then, uh, and it says in verse 37, For I say to you that this that is written, where is it written? He said, it is Hatab. He said, and this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. I was reckoned among the transgressors, those that defied the Torah. For the thing concerning me, he says, it has an end. And they said, you're sure? Behold, here are two swords. What does that imply? We must understand what it implies. We read it. It doesn't motivate us to dig beyond that statement. He commands us. I will read that again. They said, behold, here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. You tell me two swords among 12? And Yoshua said, it is enough? Two? What does that imply? What does it mean? What does the swords represent? Do we understand that? See how the enemy has beguiled us and tricked our minds? That we have no apprehension, no comprehension to press beyond anything uh, that we perceive has brought about a certain limitation. I want to take us a little deeper, all right? Hallelujah. We want to go a little deep into this. I want you to turn quickly to Yeshua, Isaiah, chapter 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must understand what the weapons are of Yah. In order to understand the selling of the garment and what sort and what they represent, I must take you through this process first. And when I finish up, you will understand all things that you need to know, Yisrael. The Torah speaks in Yeshaya. I want to show you the most powerful weapon of all, all right. One of the most powerful sword of the Ruach of Yah. It says in Yeshaya chapter 19, I want to begin here in verse 16. We understand that Misraim was the most powerful entity upon the face of the earth. Who is the only superpower in this hour? They say that America is the only superpower. That her power is superior to all powers. That her power is superior to the creator's power. And there was a nation of people that was superbly excellent in their military power and their might, their strength, their power to prevail because of their mighty military skills. And you all raised them up for that purpose. And he calls the Nobi Yeshua Isaiah to speak profoundly for us and for this time. You understand? Kepha said, though all men deny you, and though all forsake you, yet I will not deny you. And yet we have made the vows unto Yah. Regardless of what they, them or those do, I will stand. I will be faithful and obedient. He that is faithful in little, he that is unfaithful in little, is an unfaithful in much. So how does Yah entrust much to one that doesn't possess the ability to maintain in little? He will not. He will not, Yisrael. The Nobi speaks to us, Yeshaya, 
chapter 19, verse 16. He talks about the day of judgment upon Misraim. He says, in that yam, the day, he says, shall Misraim, they shall become like a woman, no strength, no virtue, no power. There shall be no strength to produce and reproduce, no power to care, to comfort. That is what the ish shore represents. The strength of her bosom, her shot, represents the power of Yah's great love. He says that she shall become like a woman. And it shall be, uh, she shall be harassed, she shall be afraid. She shall tremble and quake with disturbance of agony and oppression. Um, he says, and not only that, but fear. Because of what? Because of the tinefah, the shaking of Yah's hands. You hear that, Yisra'ya? He said, the nations are going to tremble. He said, they shall fall and tremble when Yah shakes his hand, when he rises up with the tinefah, the tinefah, and that shaking, it represents nothing but the weapon of Almighty Yah. When Yah rises up to shake his hand, he has raised up a nation like this nation, whereby the remnant and the zero, the seed of Yisrael Yah, scattered throughout the nation, they have been scattered here as well. They have been oppressed, they have been uh, maligned, they have been ostracized, they have been, uh, they have been uh, destroyed. And yet Yah says, uh, that's all right. I have caused this to befall upon them, and he has. We'll prove that out. He has caused that. That's why we should not think it strange when we fall into agonies and diverse type of temptations. It should not be a strange affair unto us. Because we're students of the Torah, we have learned and we know that these things shall be. Yoshua said, for these things are written of me. And he knew his end. And we know our end because our end is our beginning. You understand? Our end is the finished work of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I want to read that again. He said, In that day shall Misraim become like a woman, and it shall be afraid. She shall have this harad. She shall tremble with great fear. And she shall, and fear because of the shaking. Because who? The shaking of the hand of Almighty Yahweh of Shabbat. When you see that word host, the Shabbat, it is Yahweh. Almighty Yah, he is the one that, uh, that guides his army, his military power, his might, his strength. That is what the word Sabah is. He is the great one of the military, military power. There is no one like him. Hallelujah. He said, which he shakes over it, Yisra'ya. There is nothing, nothing more profound. Nothing. That's why Yahshua said to Yahshua, before the cock crows, you will even deny that you yada, that you know me. Before the cock crows, three times, you're going to deny me. And the only way we're going to know Yah is through the experience of his Torah, because it produced wisdom. And that's the truth. And if there's one that can speak so profoundly on that was. It was Shalomo. And I want to read this quickly. But I want to stand Yeshai because I want, to, I want to move somewhere from here, all right? It says in, Yesha, in, in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, Koheti, chapter 9, verse 18. It says that the hukma or the technical skill or the spiritual abilities that we, that we, that we, that is granted unto us as we begin to grow in the knowledge of Torah, wisdom, the hukma, is better than the khali or the weapons of war. Wisdom. Wisdom is better than that. So you tell me in this nation, these foolish men, they're telling you that a double barrel shotgun is better than the wisdom of Yah. They're telling you to buy guns. Shalomo was an officer of a military mighty power, Israel. It only succumbed when they disavowed Yah, when they disobeyed. <laughs> And he declares unto us that the hukmah of wisdom, uh, wisdom is better than the weapons of war. But one sinner destroys much tough. There's nothing more powerful uh, 
than the wisdom of the Chukmah of Yah. There's nothing that gives us more skillfulness than wisdom. That's why wisdom is the principal thing. But in all of our getting, we must understand what? Wisdom. We must understand the mind of Yah. We must understand the Torah, the principles, the writings of Yah, Yisrael. We must da'at, we must be able to discern and know that this is the speech of Yah. So we need wisdom. It's better than the weapons of war. It's greater than any weapons of war. It is one thing that one that understands not Yah, a sinner, a man that defies the Torah, he doesn't understand Yah Yisrael, and he destroys much Tav. One may have some Tav intent uh, and excellent knowledge of Yah's Torah. And here comes this vile one that has no understanding of truth. Uh, and he destroys that which uh, was of excellent in them uh, because they don't know how to retain uh, and maintain in the wisdom uh, of Almighty God. They will not allow their minds uh, to be maintained uh, or to be maintenance uh, by the wisdom of God because the wisdom of God constantly brings us before the judgment seat of Almighty God. And it judges us. And in the process of judging, it, uh, it cleanses us uh, and purges us from the vile nature that is offensive unto you. Yeah. And so one vile sinner man, he destroys much tough. We need to begin with the chukmah, to become skillful in the Torah, to become skillful in the knowledge of Torah with understanding. And so when a man speaks unto us, we will know whether it's of Yah, whether it's not of Yah. We have not only the technical skills and ability, above all we have the spiritual mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. And when one speaks as one being led by the Ruach, we that are the sheep will know because the sheep of Yahshua, they know his voice. And a stranger, they will not pursue after him. And a wise man always speak by the counsel of wisdom. A wise bath of Tizayon. As Shalomo expressed the beauty of that in Mishli 31. Her mind is a constant purveyor of wisdom and knowledge. She is a Chayil woman. She is strong. She is strengthened by the wisdom that has been bestowed upon her by her head. And so that's how she operates. So it is with the men of war, the warriors. Your sure is our head. Hallelujah. The armies of Yah, we are part of that. Yeshua. I want to begin here in chapter 13 of Isaiah 13. Hallelujah. Isaiah 13, 1. The burden or the massa, the burden, the tremendous agony and the trials the burden of Babel, which Yeshua, the son of Amos, did see. We are in Babel, with a land of confusion, a land where knowledge is confused. That's what Babel is. It is a constant confusion, a disorder. And our lives daily, there's so much disorder, so much complexity to our lives. And it ought not to be Yisrael. He has given us a simple way to walk. And that is in truth. Our lives should not be complicated. Our lives should be simple. He says, so there is a massa, there is a burden of Bavel. Hallelujah. And only the nobi can see that. Only the messenger of you, only a wise man can see the burden. Hallelujah. He says, lift you up a banner upon the high place of the mountain. Exalt the voice of them. And again, he says, Nuf, shake. I want you to shake. Did I not read in the 19th chapter how Yah says that because of the shaking of the hand of Yah, the weapon of great power, he says, I want you to, in Yeshua 13 too, I want you to shake the hat that may go into the gates of the noble. 
The hand of Yah is going to reach beyond the gates of the princes and those uh, that are rich and powerful, Yisra'ah. He says, for I have commanded my Kadosh one, this is Yah, I have called my mighty ones, my Gibor. Yah has called his mighty ones into his military. He has called his Gibor, those that are mighty and skillful in Torah, they're skillful in the knowledge of the Torah of Yah. He said, I've called my mighty ones. Listen, for my of or my anger, my keen resentment, even them that rejoice uh, in my excellent or my highness. He said, the noise of the multitude uh, in the mountains is like as a great people for the tremendous sounding of the military power and their armory and all of that it sounds great it is terrifying yah says a tumultuous noise of the melchutim of the kingdoms he did not just say of a kingdom he says of the kingdom they're all rattling their swords today everyone is rattling their swords and their military proudness their nuclear ambition, their nuclear strike forces, everyone, they're rattling their sabers. Yet there is one that is, sits on highness, on excellence. He is the one of excellence. He said, and this is what the nations are doing. He said, uh, of nations gather together. Yahweh of Sabah, he muster your commands. And he calls the host of the battle, he is the one that sets it in order. He said they came from far countries, from the ends of the Shemayim. Even Yahweh, even Almighty Yah, listen. And the weapon, one of the most powerful weapons that no military and no forces of hell can stand against. He says even Yah and the weapons. Do you hear that? He did not say a weapon. He did not say a khali. He said the weapons of what? His. 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 Zah. The weapons of Yah's indignation. The weapons of Yah's indignation. Go and buy and sell your garment, this filthy garment that has been spotted by the flesh, this mind, let's sell it. Let's denounce it, Yisrael, because there is one that his weapon, and the weapon tree of his military power, it begins with his Zoram, with his indignation. He said they're rattling their swords and their mighty power. The nations, the kingdoms are rising up against my elect and my people. And Yah said they are in the high places. They have the power to make themselves visible. But yet there is one that proceeds uh, out of Hashemayim. And he has the weapons uh, of his, uh, um, his indignation. You understand, Yisra'ah? He has weapons and his indignation, his wrath, uh, his ability in the midst of his office, keen resentment. Uh, there is nothing like it, Yisra'ah. We're going to buy the weapons of truth. Uh, we're going to buy the, the, the sword of the Ruach of Omar. Yah. We're going to sell out our flesh. Uh, we're not going to hold on to those things uh, that corrupt us as a nation uh, and a people. You understand? Uh, we're going to hate this garment that has been spotted uh, by this corrupt flesh. Uh, and we're going to buy the sword uh, of the Ruach of Omar. Oh, yeah. We're going to buy truth. Uh, we're going to buy what the Torah says. Uh, he's coming with the weapons. Not just a weapon. He's coming with the weapons of his indignation. Uh, what can the weapons of a shotgun uh, stand against the weapons uh, of Yah's indignation? Uh, what can the nuclear armaments of the world as they rattle their strength uh, in their high places, uh, in their palaces, in their white houses, uh, their dog houses, uh, and their whole houses? Uh, when Yah shakes his heart, when he shakes his hand, uh, the power of his keli, his weapon. He is a man of war. He is dressed to battle. His mind is dressed that way for what? To fight. To fight for the bridegroom. 
for the bride, for us, for your sure, for your sure the bridegroom, for the beauty of his bride. Hallelujah. You tell me these are the weapons of Yah, he says, that Yah come from a far country to the end of the Hashemayim, and the weapons of the Chali of his indignation. Does it say that in your translation? The weapons? Is that a weapon of Yah? What weapons are going to stand against that? If they come against us with their military might, what can they do? What can the world do against us? If Yah is for us, if He is with us, uh, then all the world can be against us. You think he, Yahshua was implying you go buy you a 45 and stock you some bullets? Come on, the proudness of this nation, they have warships, Chinook helicopters. Within a half an hour, they can wipe this place. Within every inch of every building, there's a bullet. Where are you going to escape to? There will not even be a fly left alive on the ground. Not even a gnat will survive. Yah has raised up like Misraim. He has raised up this nation. Her street is a military proudness. And so these carnal minded preachers and these men are telling the people to buy swords, to buy pistols and guns. For what? Your shoe is the one that fight our battles. That's why he said the Kepha, I pray that your Emona, these men have no Emona. They're sick, twisted men. They're twisted men. They can send 10 or 12 Navy SEALs and a SOL team in here and wipe every last one of us out. I don't care what kind of weapons we have. They can turn this whole little town black. You couldn't see anything. And the power of wickedness, they do it on a Saturday night uh, when there is no moon, uh, where there is no light. What are you going to do, Yisrael? Yeah? We're going to rely upon the weapons of Yah? Are we going to take confidence in the weapons of man? <laughs> you think that man has created these weapons? No, he hasn't. I will show you. Even his pistols who created them. Can I show us? Uh, you know, I really don't feel like preaching tonight. But I'm going to talk a little bit, all right? I'll show you. Let me move on a little further. He said, they come from the far <coughs> countries, from the ends of the Shemayam and Yah, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy. He said, I am going to Hamal. I'm going to bring it down to hell to destroy. But Yah says, Habal. He is saying that is a pledge from my bosom. It is not sh Shomad. He says, I'm going to Habal. This is my pledge. I'm going to destroy not some of the land, but the whole land, Yisraya. He's going to destroy Bethel. He's going to destroy Misraim. And we think that we're going to stand with weapons when the pigs of hell come against us. He has raised them up to come against you. He raised up Pharaoh for one purpose. To come against his nation. He's going to pull out his weapons of his indignation. You don't want to see the indignation of Almighty Yah. We must run and hide, uh, enter into the bosom of Yahshua HaMashiach, and hide ourselves uh, in the Torah of Yah while these indignations pass over us. Uh. We don't want to see the indignation of Yah. We want to be uh, covered by the bosom of Yahshua, by His dam. Uh. He's going to destroy the whole land, not just some of it. He's going to destroy it all. Do you understand? That's why we as a nation, that's why Yoshua said, I pray that your imuna fail you not. He said, I was numbered with the transgressors, with the sinners. So that's why he warns us, Yisraeli, because he has raised them up to be a correcting tool for his nation as well. Quickly, Yeshaya 54. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish on time. This is the triumphant state of Yisraeli, his people, as Yah describes it. 
And as Yah, as Yah is the one that has caused us to endure the great afflictions that we have endured. He says in Yeshua, Isaiah 54, 11, he said, O oh, you afflicted, or you oni, tossed with the tempest and not comforted. We're tossed to and fro. Did he not tell Chafa Yeshua that how Shatan desired to nuf, to sift him as sweet? And we are a nation of people who have been tossed to and fro by the hands of Shatan. And there has been no naham for us, no pity, no comfort. We've been brutalized, our babies killed, our wives killed, our forefathers, and no one to comfort us at all. You understand? Yah says to us, look what he says to us. He said, open your eyes. He said, behold, I lay your stones with beautiful colors. I lay before you the very attractiveness of my creative power, of who I am, my stones. He said, and I lay your foundations with sapphire. He said, and I will make your windows of your shimshash, or the sun to rise. He said, I'm going to make your windows of rubies, Israel, and your gates of crystals or, or carbuncles. He said, and your borders of pleasant stones. You're going to be surrounded by the stone, just like uh, the stones uh, that were in the garment of Hoshotan. Was he not the covering uh, of the throne of Yah? This is the same representation. That's why he said, Yoshua, the Kepha Shimeon, that the devil desires to move, to sift you, uh, to rob you, to destroy you, my friend. And I pray for your imuna. It fails you not. Was not the carbuncle one of the stones uh, the covering of the garment of Lucifer? Sure was. We must always go back to the beginning. Hallelujah. He says, and all your children, and all of your children, all Yisraeliah, all of his children, all of your children shall be taught by Almighty Yahweh. Not by the world. He's going to surround us. That's why when the enemy came against Eob. He says, everyone knows, even the Malachi know that he has placed a hedge, a wall around you. And this is what this represents, the beauty of Yah's protection. No power of hell, no weapons, let them get the military power. Let Russia, let China, let India, like Pakistan, let all the nations, America, rise up against the remnant of Israel. What a beautiful thing. We're going to see the weapons of Yah. We're going to see his weapons, his indignation. We trust in the weaponry of Almighty Yah. You're going to trust in the skill of natural men. The weapons lock up on them. Here you got someone coming, you got a little AK-47, you got your little carbine, and you go to pull and the bullet lock, and you're trying to clear the chamber. I will, my friend. And he has one of those Barrett shotguns, or the Barrett rifle, that'll reach out two or three miles, that'll go through a wall that's three feet thick. Sharp shooters that can hit you right in the eye. What do you think? What, what do you think your little peacemaker's going to do? That's stupid. We must trust in the weaponry of Yah. We must buy this weapon. We must this way. We must sell out garment. Sell out to your filthy ways. Sell out your will. Sell it out and buy the garment. By the sword, by the two-edged sword, uh, by the weapon tree of Yah. Yes. You can only do it by the power of truth. Uh. Can't do it any other way. Hallelujah. Stuck up all your guns. Uh. Prepare yourself for the war. But I tell you, there is one that the Barrett can't even touch. And that is the truth of Yah. Cannot tear it down. Cannot destroy the Israel. Yah. Stuck up all the guns you want to. Even all the food you want, it doesn't mean a thing at all, Yisra'ya. Yeah. That's a fact. It doesn't mean one thing at all. 
That is not the survival of Yisra'ya. It is trusting in the Torah. In Ibrahim's 11, it said they wandered and they slept in caves and dens. And these are the patriarchs of the Imuna of Yah. They had no certain dwelling place. I will die and go to hell before I fight for a wicked nation trying to prevent the oppressor of the ones that Yah has raised up to destroy. He's going to destroy his children and he can only bring you down or take breath from you if Yah permits it. Hashatan said, move the hedge about him and he will curse you to your face. He will call he will speak against you. Even his wife said, curse him and die, man. No, that's what this effeminate spirit tells us. Uh, turn away from you. Go your way. Do your thing. Uh, go the way you want to. Call upon your bears. No, Yisrael. We're going to trust him. <laughs> We're going to trust you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All your children shall be taught by Yahweh. And great shall be the shalom of your children. Hallelujah. Verse 14. In Sadiq shall you be established by the righteous government of Yah. He's going to establish us. Shall you be established. You shall be far from oppression. Nothing and no one shall oppress you, Yisra'ya. For you shall not fear. For you shall not fear. And from terror... For it shall not come even near to you. Yah says, behold, they shall surely gather together. He's letting us know that the nations shall gather. What do you tell Yisrael in nations that have no ability to buy guns that are poor? Did he not identify us here in the 11th verse? Oh, you are near or afflicted. The poor, the dull, those that have no strength. Is that not how he addresses us, Yisra'ya? That's how he addresses us. What do you tell a poor man that labors every day for bread for his children and his wife? And that's all he has. He has no change of clothing. You tell him to go buy a barret? You tell him to try to buy a white rifle that will cost him $15,000, $20,000? You tell him that? Or do you tell them about truth? You tell them about Torah. You go tell them about twenty thousand dollars in a, in a weapon, or, or he saved three years to buy a, a little uh, uh, six, seven thousand dollar rifle, and afraid to shoot a bullet because the bullets cost so much, eight, nine, ten dollars a bullet. Come on, Yisra, yeah, that's not yah. That is not of yah, Yisra, yeah. Hallelujah. He said, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against you, he says, uh, they shall not fall. Now, I know what we think even when Sh uh, Shulamo says that a Sadiq man falleth uh, seven times. I know I'm going to teach on that. I don't want to go. I I'll teach on that. But that not fall doesn't mean that he falls to sin. Because it says in that same chapter that a Sadiq man falleth seven times. Uh, and a sinner, or one that loves sin, uh, falls into mischief. He did not say a righteous man falls into mischief. We've been trained to think that he used the word fall, so we used to see the word nafal. That means a righteous man fall prostrate. He falls before Yah. The word nafal means to fall prostrate. It means to fall, it means to fall away, but it means to fall prostrate. And he lets us know he could not be talking about a Sadiq man. Because he says in the same right, a comma, semicolon there, that a sinner falls into mischief. Or a wicked man falls into mischief. An unrighteous man falls into mischief. We've been taught, we've been trained. Yah says, we're coming to that time. When I surround Yisra'ya, when I put my beauty around them, when they're cloaked in my sodik, he said, then I will teach your children, and shalom shall be the strength of your children. That's a fact. That's a fact, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says. Verse 15 again. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against you, shall, they shall fall into a violent death. And the fall means that to fall into a violent death by the hands of Yah. So righteous, a sadiq man cannot fall. He may fall uh, into a violent death that there's no will or desire to sin, but he doesn't fall into sin uh, and practice a lifestyle that is wicked and abominable. That's not what it means. 
Anytime this whore has taught us what it means, let's seek a righteous mind. Show me what it means. Hallelujah. Yah says, uh, they shall gather together against you, but they shall not fall uh, for your sake. Behold, uh, listen to what Yah says. Yah says, behold, I have created the Harash or the smith. Does it say that? I've created the smith. We know what the smith is. One that is skillful in making weaponry. Yah said, I created Abarach. I created the smith. Did he say that? I created them in the mind to create weaponry. He, he answers all things. And so Yahshua is telling us to go buy something from the smith. Let me read on. He said, that blows the coal in the fire. He gets the metal hot you have to, to create the barrels, to create the bullet. That blows the coal in the fire. And he said he brings forth a kelly, an instrument, a kelly, a weapon. Do they not bring forth weapon? He brings forth a kelly. Do they not have furnaces where the smiths make the barrels for the guns? And he brings forth instruments for his work. He says, I have created, I have barah, the waster to destroy. Yah has done that. He says to us, Yisra, Yah, hear me. Why would Yahshua tell us to go buy a Smith weapon? They have a guy named Smith and Weston, don't they? Sure they do. Yah said, I created the one to make the weapons. Because he's going to show us that I don't give a damn, no weapon. The next verse, no Kelly weapon that is formed against you shall shalach. It shall not make progression. It shall not progress. No weapon. He said, even the weapons of the, even, even the Barrett rifles. They can sit a half a mile away and, and knock a gnat off a, off a hairpin. That's how powerful that weapon is. The bullets are like that. That big around. It'll go through that wall, just, just crack through this wall. There's nothing. That's what that weapon does. That's how powerful it is. They got gunships that are set over this building right here. And they will sit, you sit right over this building. It won't take me about three, three minutes, two minutes. With it less than that. Within 30 seconds, they had dropped the bullet in every inch in this. Every building. Nothing escaped, not even the rat. Nothing. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Nothing escapes. They don't have to sit over this building. And what are you going to do? You think that these, they're not Gibor men. They're not brave in the Torah. They don't have the weaponry of the Torah. You think these cowards, when the fire start laying out on them, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to run for cover. We are in the covering of the wings of Yah and Yahshua. That's our cover. No weapon that formed against us shall prosper. And every law shown, every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned. They're already condemned. He said they shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of Yah and their sadiq is of me, says Yah. He said they're righteousness. I don't care what you think, how right you think they are. He said, but this is the heritage of those uh, that are my elect. And what they do, how they respond, that's me right there. They're representing me. They're representing my character. He made the smiths, Yisrael. He made the ones that blow forth the instruments of death uh, and destruction. He caused them to rise up. He made them, uh, he gave them that wisdom uh, that they would rise up even against him with their weaponry. What? Against his elect, uh, his call out, his uh, those that he has elected. He made the smith. Smith and Weston. Isn't that a pistol name that? Come on, my friend. One of the most prominent gun makers. And Yah said, I made them. I created them that they may create their weaponry because I want the weapons to come against you. He said, I want you to know that even when the weapons come against you, it's not going to, it's not going to progress. 
then it won't prosper. He said, and the tongues that rise up in judgment against you and say they're heretics and they're twisted. He said, they're going to all be condemned. No, there's no chance for them for repentance. We don't want to see what Yah says. We want to hear our minds speak with this false delusion of, of what we think is pity. But that's not so. Every tongue, he said, every tongue that rises up against Yisra'ya is going to be condemned. It's going to be brought down to hell, Yisrael, because the weapons of his power is his off, his anger, his za'am, an anger that no one knows the power of it but Yah. Because that is the only word that uh, he can, uh, we can assess his anger that he grants unto us uh, is his za'am, his za'am. I don't know what it means. But we have seen, uh, we have seen the very, we have seen the very, uh, uh, the very ingredients of that. We've seen the winds, the storms, uh, the raging of the earth, the quaking uh, of the earth. Who can fight against that? Come on. What could they do in Fukushima there in Japan? When the earth shook and the rage of the sea, the nostrils of Yah blowing. You know, this nation thought it did something in Hiroshima and Nakastaki, but it's coming down. This country is coming down. They burnt those babies. The babies are going to burn. You come out of this dirty hole, this slut. Come out of her ways. Come out of her processes. You come out of her, Yisra Yaqab. Stop thinking like her. Hallelujah. They burnt the babies in that country. The babies here are going to burn. The babies here are going to burn. You understand? That's why you better hide your little ones in your bosom. In the bosom of truth. Hallelujah. I want to finish up here quickly. Hallelujah. Again in the book of Hallelujah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. God speaks to his people. He says, I'm going to make you surrender unto Babylon. That's the reason why. Because of your sins and your wickedness. He said, but I tell you what. Even though that Babylon has a strength over you. He said, I'm going to deliver you. You understand? He raised up Mr. Ayim. We're in Babel, Yisra'ya. But he's going to deliver us. You understand? His weapons are mighty. Listen to this in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 21, verse 1. <clears throat> I want to read this quickly. It said that the Daba of the word which came to Jeremiah from Yah. We see where the word came from. It did not come from Jeremiah, but it came from Almighty Yahweh. When King Sidkiya, he represents the righteous throne of Yah. And also uh, sent him uh, Pashkor, the son of Melchiah, and also Sinfiah, or Tisavaniah, and the son of Mahasiah, the Kohan, saying, he says this, inquire, I beg you, I pray you, of Yah, for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, makes Lacham, he wants to fight a war against us. If so be that Yah will deal with us according to his wondrous work, so that the enemy will draw from us. The word came unto this Nobi to warn Yisra'ya, he has raised up an assault against them because of our sins and their wickedness. Then said Yeremiah, verse 3, to them, this Shall you say to uh, Zedekiah, Sidikiah, this says, you are the sovereign master of Yisrael. Yah says, see, I will turn, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hand. You got your swords, your weapons, your pistols. Yah says to Yisrael, I'm going to turn them back. Because you're trying to fight a battle that I have not ordained you to fight. He said, I'm going to turn back. I'm going to survive. I'm going to make sure that there's no power, no strength. You may think that your weapons are going to prevail for you, but they're not. This is what he said. Listen, I'm going to turn back the weapons of war that are in your hand. Wherewith you fight against the king of Babel. You got your weapons, your guns, you fighting against the new world order, you are a damn fool. Yah has ordained all things. 
Let the new world order. We already have a new world order. We have an order under the hand of Hashotan. And these liars today are trying to promote it like it's going to be some. The government today, it is an order out of hell. It is not the order of the government of Torah. You think that this form of government or any form we say is any different or we can, we can constitute another different one? No! These are stupid men. They're children. They're boys. This is how the enemy play with their stupidity. It was a new order the day that Yahshua gave up the Ruach HaKodesh. It was an order against Yah from the mandates of hell to destroy every seed. Yes, I'm taking your weapons. I'm turning them back. You're going to take up against Babel and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you outside the wall. And I will assemble them in the midst of this city, Yerushalayim. Did not he speak in Yeremiah that he's going, to, he's going to put a wall and a foundation around Yisraya that our window shall be a shemesh or like the sound of the brightness uh, and that we, we will see the very stones of Yah or, or the beauty of his, his presence around us? Sure, read that. He's going to turn back the weapons. He said that they're going to come against you outside of the walls. <clears throat> And I myself, y'all says this in verse 5, and I myself will fight against you, Yisrael, with an outstretched hand. He's going to shake his hand. He's going to fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in af and fury, machemach, and in great wrath. What weapons can you use against that? This is what he's turning back our weapons with. His wrath, his anger, his indignation. Why? Because Kepha, he represents Yisraya. I pray that your imuna fail you not. When you get despair, you begin to trust in the arm of the flesh. And you forget about the wondrous works of Yah. How he brought his nation out. How he subjugated them to Misraim. How he subjugated them to Babel. He did it to let you know, even in the midst of all of that, your strength is mightier than theirs. Their numbers were never destroyed. They grew and they multiplied. They became stronger. That righteous men shoved them to show them their sins. Come on, Yisrael. He said, turn them back. Show you. I myself, I'm going to do it. With great wrath. He said, and I will smite the inhabitants of the city, both man and beast, and they shall die of great pestilence. And Yah says, and afterwards says, Yah, I will deliver Sidkiya, uh, king of Yahuda and his servants and the people, and such as are left in the city from, I'm going to deliver from pestilence and from the sword, from famine, and from the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel into the hands of their enemies and into the hands of those that seek their nephesh. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. And he shall not spare them, have not pity, nor shall he have mercy. have raised up this kingdom, world power, to smite Yisraya. For us to live as Yoshua, for Yisraya to die, we gain the promises of Almighty Yah. I pray that your imuna fail you not against even the weapons of this world, against the military powers, that you do not become fearful and frightened because the fearful will not end into the kingdom promises of Almighty Yah. Yah says it is appointed for you to die. And if that is the way I appoint for you, uh, that there may be strength in the bosom of Yisrael. Yeah, I will turn back your power to even fight. I will turn back your weapons. Uh, you're not going to say by my strength. You're going to sing the song of power like Moshe. How we got over. How we overcome. And you're going to attribute all things to Almighty Yah. It's not going to be by any of our strength, Yisraya. I don't care what the world says, uh, that these uh, religious, I'm not a religious retard. I'm not even a religious man. I don't care what they say, Yisraya. In all of their skillful nature, they have not been able to progressively alter anything at all. The whole world system is falling. Everything is falling. 
I'm going to trust what Yah says. He said, I'm the one. Hallelujah. I'm going to be the one that smite them. And they're going to smite you and they shall not spare. Verse 8. And to this people you shall say, this says, Yah, behold, I set before us. He set before you, Yisrael. He set before us the way of life. That is one of the swords. The way of life. And he also set before us the way of death. He that abide in the city shall die by the sword. He that abide, he that has coveted the sins and the aggression against Yah, you're going to die by the sword and by famine and by pestilence. And he that goes out shall fall by the Chaldeans. You're not going to escape. You're going to pick up your weapons and think you're going to, you're going to win. You're not going to escape. It's what Yah is saying. He's going to, he's going to have it whereby we're going to trust him, Yisrael. We're going to buy what he commands us to buy. And I will teach that in the weeks to come what we should buy, all right? Yeah. And the Chaldeans uh, that shall besiege you, uh, he shall live. And his nephew shall be to him a prey. Look what he says in verse 10. For I have set my face against this city, Jerusalem, against Yisrael, for evil. And not for tough, says Yah. I have given, I sh it shall be given into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And touching the house or the bed of Dawi, or king of Yehuda, say, hear you the word of Yah. Bayat house of Dawi, <clears throat> this says Yah. This is what he commands us right now. He tells us to deem, to execute, to act as a judge. And the whore has told us, don't judge. Don't judge nobody. This is what he says. He says, Dean, he say, execute judgment in the morning and deliver him that is plundered out of the hands of the oppressor. You Sadiq man, execute judgment in the morning to deliver Yisrael, those that are oppressed out, those that have been plundered out of the hands of the plunder. And unless we execute judgment and to judge the matters according to the Torah. And this is where the whore with her subtle ways has, uh, has slithered in and caused us uh, to turn our back away from the judgment of Almighty Yah. He say, execute judgment <clears throat> uh, and deliver him that is plundered out of the hand of the oppressor. He said, leaves unless my fury go out like fire and burn that none can quench. Because of the evil of our doing, Yisra'ya. What can quench the fire of Yasra? They can quench the fire of the nuclear fallout, the atomic bomb. I was reading the other day in Fukushima, they said that it's not hot anymore. So they're saying that all of the nuclear fuel has burned up. Lies. You understand? So who's going to quench the terror of Yas weaponry, his army? Behold, I am against you, O inhabitants of the valley and rocks of the plain, says Yahweh, which says, who shall come down against us? Who's able to stop us? That's where those that are in their high-minded state, even we see those in the valley, those that, that are poor and have nothing. Who's going to come against us? Who's going to come against America? Yah's going to burn this whole house up. He's going to burn this dirty slut we defend truth. You need the sword of the Ruach. You need the weapon of Yah to defend truth. You don't need a pistol to fight against the wicked. They come in to take your food. Take it, man. You can have it. You need some help. He says, who shall come down against us or who shall enter into our habitation? Verse 14. Yah says this, but I will punish you according to the fruit of your doing, says Yah. And I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof, and it shall devour all things around it. What fire? The fire of his za'am, his wrath, his terror, his hand. We must buy the weaponry of Yah, the sword of Yah. These this is the composition of Yah's sword. Sell the garment of the flesh. Sell the corrupt attitude and the ways. And let us buy 
the sword, the ruach of Yah. You can sell your house and get your tank. It doesn't mean a thing. Not at all. You ask those soldiers that were in tanks in Afghanistan. And some of the simplest little forms to combat them without all the technical expertise and were just warriors and ready to die. How they were even able to destroy, to maim, to cripple 30,000 men and women. They crippled, they maimed, they shot. The minds are distorted now. Come on, Yisrael. We know that his weapons are great. And there is no weapon that formed against Yisraya. None is going to prosper. And every tongue that rise up against us shall be, and they will be condemned. I'm going to continue on this, all right? I'm going to stop there a little over, but that's all right. Hallelujah. Let the world, let them go on their way, do their thing. Let them rise up against us. But that's all right, Yisraya. Let those that listen, let them come. continue to come against me. That's all right. You say what you want to, you can write it. I will put it up so the world can see it. Because I have no fear of their words at all. I have no fear of this weak generation's words. They're weak, they're shallow, effeminate men. Very few are men. May the riches of Yah rest upon you. Your Yeshua's mighty name, may his strength prevail. In the midst of this dark, wicked generation, we shall overcome. We need the weapons of Yah. We'll get into more specifics on this. I kind of rushed through, but that's all right. I'll teach it over again just like this. You'll get understanding. Hallelujah. Ya Barak, you all, Yisra'ya, may his strength rest upon you all. Hallelujah. May Ya Barak, let us stand to our feet. Greeting to you all that have joined us. May his riches rest upon you, your shoes, mighty name. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim. In all things we do, Barak, you this day, Ya, we ask your safety among your people as they travel our Zachin Shimri and his Isho and Ima as they travel down the highway, his grandson as well as Achot uh, Abiyya uh, and also Achot Blanton and her children. Watch over we do ask, give us strength and shalom this night and rest and comfort in your shul how much you heal us all that need healing. Those that join us on tonight, brach them I ask and all things in your shul's name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.